And I think we're going to uh, hand. Are we, Dave? Are we going yep, to do it? One second. Yep. We are going to hand over to Mark. That's Marcus there. Um, and we're going to hand over to him in a moment. Um, to, he's ready. Marcus? Are you, Hi. Are you, are you ready? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. All good. Okay. Can everyone hear me all right? Brilliant. Marcus, I, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much indeed. It's been really great watching this uh, or listening to it uh, from afar. Just because I actually can't see you guys now. We can't turn the laptop around, I understand. Is that right? We can't turn the laptop around. Oh, hang on. I'm just turning it around. There you go. I'd like to be able to see people. There we go. That's better. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. It makes a big difference. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't stay and see people? No, okay. Um, the reason is, if, if in fact it does go wrong, I will be preparing a test card, which will be this. And so you, because that's theatre, and I just wanted to make sure that this live stuff is actually working. And today I'd like to say that this is being brought to you by Moleskin and Parker Pen. So everyone who thinks that I'm doing all the technical stuff, if the Parker Pen and Moleskin are listening, we love you guys. Thanks very much indeed. So a little bit about me, and I'm going to give you my five pennyworth, my five pworth, actually, at the end of the presentation, and then leave some time for some Q&A. So what we're going to do, first of all, is just talk a little bit about who I am, what I do. I'm the artistic director of a company called Pilot, and uh, we're a national touring company. I'm just checking we can hear, because I'm hearing the, my voice coming back very, very jumpy. Can anybody just let me know whether that's actually lagging or whether that's working? Dave, can you uh, just talk to me? It's absolutely fine at our end. There's no delay at our end. Oh, okay, that's cool. All right. So that's fine. So I'm the artist director of Pilot Theatre Company. We're based here at York Theatre Royal. We're in the process of moving, and we're also in the process of about start shooting a movie. So it's kind of one of the most disruptive days of our kind of working life. Uh, but that's just, the way, that's just the way it is for us today. So in, ter in terms of what I'm going to talk to you today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the work that I've done. And... Um, so as a director, I, I make theatre, and also I've been to uh, the TED. I've been to TED in California twice. I'm going to replug my headphones back in because there's some really. You can hear me, yeah. Speak. That's good. Okay, I want a two-way dialogue. This is about engagement, okay? Otherwise, you're going to get this. Uh... Okay, so we're in it. We're international touring. We tour the UK. I've been to TED twice. And we're just recipients of one of the new space um, awards from the BBC and the Arts Council, which we're very grateful. I'm going to fill you in a little bit more about that. But a bit of background about me. I'm actually a scientist by training and an artist by profession. Um, I trained at Leeds University. And what really interests me is the space between the arts and science and where that blur and that edge margin happens. And that's one of the reasons why, as a director of Pilot Theatre, I created and set up the Shift Happens Conference. Now, the Shift Happens Conference is our TED-style version of looking at the arts integration with technology. Um, so what we're doing is running that again this year on July the 5th, and more of that later. But I'm really glad that we talked about business models, and some of the things I want to share with you today um, is really some of, our, some of the things that we've learned along the way. And our business model, it's not a business model, it's a business picture. And in fact, we are um, a starfish as an organization. And the reason I particularly like starfish at the moment is that starfish are really cool. And they're, not, and they're really cool because many reasons. They've got, they've got five, uh, five digits. And you know the story that if you cut off one of those digits, you know what happens. Not only does the original one grow back, but the one that you cut off also forms a completely new starfish. So in this age of austerity and cuts, we've been using that as a kind of mantra in terms of one of the things that we do. So we've attached five areas of our work to each of these points across the starfish as a model, as a visualization tool for us as a whole team. So for us, we do our traditional theatre touring at the top. It, that's what we do. We tour nationally up and down the country. We also, we also run our Shift Happens and our TEDx events, and that's another event of our conference running. We also do our education and young people and participation work. And that's, again, another of, another of the arms. The other one is our international work. 
and we are a member of a, um, an EU um, network and we've been doing work internationally with a, an EU funded programme, so we work internationally. And the, the final arm is our R&D and our development arm in terms of creating and looking and exploring the new ways and new technologies that they have and the, the things they can offer for us as arts organisations. So and one of the key things I want to share with you today, because we're publicly funded and we're very grateful for that, but with that comes a great responsibility. And the responsibility I feel as an artist and as a theatre maker and as a creator is that at some point along the line of DNA, at some point on that food chain, we have to make that point of access free for our audiences. We have to make some point of that entry free. And sometimes what we're talking around in terms of our, of our models of business is not about financial capital, but about social capital and what we gain in terms of being a trustworthy, uh, a reputable organisation. And with that, we can build our partnerships and develop our brand and develop the way that we become, we become trusted. And we become trusted through the way we use those networks and we use these technologies to develop those partnerships. And the key one of those for us at the moment is working with Kinura. And Kinura uh, will be working with us on the space project, but we've been doing live streaming and working with them since 2008-9. But more of, that, more of that later. So, I want to just come back and just check sure that if anybody thinks I'm, you can't hear me or whatever, just come and wave in front of the camera, Dave, that'd be really cool. Um, so, in terms of the projects we've been developing in the fifth arm strand of our, of our starfish, if you like, and just so everyone knows, you've got the reference point on that, there's a great book called The um, Spider and the Starfish, the Rise of Leaderless Organizations by Ori Bravman and Rod Beckstrom. And I first saw that in TED in California in 2007. And really that's about the shifting way of organizational and the organizational change that we're undergoing. Where, and the breaking news is the smartest people sometimes don't work in our organizations. They work outside our organizations. And it's our role and responsibility to harness that potential, to bridge those gaps and to make those partnerships. So we end up working with those people and we end up connecting outside of our organization. And so we are able to do that thing like the starfish of being survival and being able to hang on in times of austerity. And let's be clear that if one of those areas of our, of our work goes, we are not going to fall over as an organization. So there's a strength and a real um, integrity in terms of that as a sort of visualization model. So, some of the projects we've been doing, I'll run through those for you. As I've mentioned, um, the live streaming. And for us, one, the one key thing to be um, clear about this, this is not us trying to do NT Live Lite. It's not us trying to do broadcast on the web a bit like NT Live. What we're doing here is different. And I don't, and NT Live and, and the New York Met is absolutely integral to some of the thinking that we've been doing. And in fact, as a bit of backstory, I was over in New York in 2008. And the reason I went there was I went to see one of the first streams there that was coming out of the New York Met. And there I met Julie Borshaw Young. And Julie Borshaw Young was the person who was heading up the entire streaming program. And while we were in York, I invited her over to York, New York to York, so good we named it once, uh, invited her to come over to Shift Happens to speak around the model was, that we were seeing with burgeoning. The genie was out of the bottle. And at that first Shift Happens in 2008, David Sable was there from the National Theatre, and that's where NT Live, in terms of its research, was, was started with the, with the relationship with Julie Bush Young and their Buy Experience company, which now delivers the whole global um, NT Live program. Now, for us, we recognize that, but also we recognize that us as a small organization, we're not going to compete with satellite broadcasting. We can't afford to do that. But what we wanted to be able to do was to develop ways where the on, on, online, we were able to create a different sort of engagement. So back in 2008, we did start to live stream our work. And what we found in that is that on the live stream program, we were able to also have the chat room running side by side. This is, this is pre-Twitter, everybody. Okay, this is, this, is, this is how fast this world is working. So in 2008, Twitter wasn't really on the radar in terms of most people. So the idea of a chat room down the side of the work that was happening was quite extraordinary. And it's there when I was streaming the very first piece, a piece called This Child, and we streamed it from York Theatre Royal. Someone was online from Seattle talking to someone who was online from Florida. I knew that because they were, they were the parents of a member of the cast who was then talking to someone in Queensland, Australia, who was then talking to someone in London, who was then talking to someone, to someone in York. And this was stimulated through a piece of art created in a small black box room 
suddenly had a radiation and a resonance around the world. Now that for me was incredibly potent, exciting and completely new. And let's be clear, one of the things around this, this was all stimulated from a piece of live work. And I'm going to be absolutely clear about this, of saying that, that live is the key to the things that we're doing and the things that we make and how we connect and communicate. The internet is a live medium, it's live, Twitter's live, this live stream's live, this Skype is live. Live is what it is, and that's what we're selling. That is our unique selling point, particularly in the performing arts. The visual arts, too, can also have uh, run, run live work. So the live streaming was incredibly important to us in terms of unlocking some new possibilities of engagement and real connection with people right across. Okay, so uh, we also run a thing called Drama On Demand. This is another new project here, which I'm going to show you. I haven't got slides, I've got real things. Okay, this is our Drama On Demand, and here there's an iPod in the back. It's designed by a designer. And you can come into the theatre, we've got several of these books made. You can come and say, I want some drama, I want it now. I want it on demand, I don't want to wait till half past seven, I can't wait, my bus goes quarter to eight. I want some drama and I want it now. And we're able to make it available through wireless headphones around our building. We're, we're generating a whole area for the work of saying, what is it that people want? And how can we as artists and creative individuals really help to shape and make that change to provide the audience's needs? So if you want to have some stuff when have a cup of tea, they can have it. Okay, so the other thing is, uh, we're working, uh, the reason I'm, I can't really today is we're working on a green screen film. Um, and again, one of the key points for all organizations is to have some, I call artistic currency, some creative currency. And what that means is that we've got, um, we have a project and a product that no one else has. So therefore, we were able to go to a, to a, you know, a commercial organisation who was able to help us to do some of the funding for this and to help us deliver some of the money for, that we needed to help deliver this as a new movie project. And from the back of that, we've been working with seven graduates who, who are from uh, York University who are visual effects graduates who've been working with us since September on developing a new 3D world. And they're working on beta test, beta versions of software for things like Maya and things like Hero. And these new stuff have been beta tested and these graduates are working, we're able to create something that hasn't been done before, and we're able to attract the funding in to help us with that. Because again, we have some artistic or we have some creative and cultural currency of being able to sort of make a bargaining tool for us to develop that work. So really, it's coming back to what Mel says, that some of the ideas and the core activities that we do have are absolutely vital that help us to move forward. Um, I just wanted to come back about the, the idea about innovation and creative. I noticed that innovation had been sort of one of those words that's sort of become hijacked recently. It was on the front of Cameron's uh, uh, box the other day when he was talking, as and innovation is great written. And I think one of the key things is that the key word for me is creativity. And it's something that Mel mentioned as well, and also Nicole's mentioned. And for me, the creativity, I stick with the... Um, with the Ken Robinson definition of creativity. And creativity is when ideas have value. Uh, because we can have hundreds and hundreds of ideas, and you know, people can spiral off and we can do sort of crazy thinking. But actually, do they have any value? Do they have any meaning and can they be taken further? And can those ideas, ideas then be shared to develop projects and to work, go further? So does it have value? And that's one of the really key things that we have to sort of remember as us as organizations about the tough stuff that we make create. So um, that's, that's one of the key things. So having artistic currency, having something, having ideas that have value, and then being bold, brave, and ridiculous, and not being afraid in the science bit of my brain of poking something, seeing how far you can make it work until it breaks. Push something to the edge to, until it falls over. Find out what it can do. For those of you who are on Twitter, you might want to follow a project which we're running under the radar uh, until June, and the hashtag is TAG2012. Um, it's, it's an immersive, in, uh, extended, durational performance project. We don't know where it's going. We don't know what, where it's going to end up. It's interactive because the live nature of it means that people are being engaged with it and are engaging with it as it's being written. Again, this is part of our R&D project. So really, as organizations, not only do we control the means of production, but also the channels of distribution, which is incredibly exciting, I think, for organizations, and we should remember this, that we do actually have control of the production, and we can now absolutely harness the channels of distribution. 
And that for us is absolutely key. So just a little bit about the live streaming stuff. A little bit of the live streaming stuff. I mentioned Kinura. How am I do how am I doing for time, by the way? Are we all right? Are we doing okay for time? Do you want to talk to me? Are we talking, gone home? I, can't, I'm look, I am looking at a wall, okay? It's okay for you. I'm, I'm going to do that. I am looking at a wall. Are you still there? Thank you. Thank God. Is this, the, this is the weirdest theatre gig I've ever done. I'm uh, talking to a blank wall in my office whilst boxes are being packed around me. But I'm enjoying it. Um, so the live stream is really, is really interesting. And the next iteration of live stream for us is look, when you look at a theatre stage and you look at a big, a big proscenium space or whatever. We good? Hang on, hang on. Just flipping you around. Oh, well, they're there. The it's better. <laughs> God, that's better. Thank you. I don't feel quite so. I don't feel quite so Billy No Mates. Oh, that's better. Thank you. Um, uh, also, the sounds better as well. Who knew? Who knew? Innovation in action. You can see my moleskin now. Um, just saying the the um, the live stream. The next iteration is when I'm so when I'm looking at you now, and I'm looking at an audience. So when an audience is looking at a stage. You know that when you're watching something, you choose where to watch. You choose, you can be listening to the, the dialogue, you can be listening to the music, but you might choose to watch the person on the downstage left shoes because they're an interesting shade of orange. Or you might want to watch the, um, the, the upstage right lighting change. Or you might want to watch, you know, the, the, the person playing violin who's in the second row. You choose where you want to watch. You make those decisions. And one of the key things for us is that we're NT Live and we're those things at the moment. Those decisions are taken away from you. Those decisions you can't, you can't influence. You're going to get the close-up of the soprano whether you asked for it or not. So in terms of what we're doing with the space project, we're going to be doing a, um, a seven-stroke, eight uh, multi-camera live stream across a number of players. So a little bit like Nicole said that uh, Kinura did at Glastonbury last year. But the option now is, of course, you can choose those points of view from where you want to watch the piece. And OK, that's not in itself particularly new. But where I think, we, where I think the next iteration, which we're really excited about working with Kinura on, and working with the BBC and working with the Arts Council, is that when it comes to the download, when it comes to being on the space and being in that version of iPlayer that it will be, is that you as the end user, as the audience, will then be in the position of having a creative choice around the numbers of different options you've got to drag and drop into a timeline, your version of what you want to re-see back. Now, for us, that doesn't exist at the moment. The BBC said, no, that doesn't exist. So for us, we want to push that bit right the way to the edge to say, OK, where do we find out uh, what bit does this work and what bit does this doesn't work? And it's that inquiry and that opportunity for us to say, well, actually, as an end user, as an audience member, as a person sitting on row three, I actually really want the option. I really want to watch the backstage view. I really want to watch the view from the, from the DSM who's running the show at the side of the stage. So those options are then possible uh, to be put back into uh, the person, the, the audience's um, creative, creative role within, within that part of the process. So we're really looking forward to developing that. The key thing we have to, had to get through, and this goes by, right back to 2008, was that we had to overcome the whole notion of broadcast unions, agreements, actors, performance, rights, IP. And that for us was the minefield. And that's why I went to talk to Julie Borshaw Young in New York. And one of the key things for us is we developed a system which is called our virtual box office. And this is a new model. Um, it's something we've just come up with. And it's something we've managed to get the rights, which is why we've been able to stream since 2008. And it's why we actually built in the revenue stream within our space budget of how we manage to say to the creative team, this is what's going to happen. And what we do is we say to people, we say to their agents, we say to everybody that, look, we're going to assume there's a number of viewers and we're going to imagine those viewers have paid a, a, a price and that price is the price of an app. It's 59p, it's 69p, it's a dollar, whatever. And we want to say that's the kind of, that's the kind of entry price that people might have paid. Um, and we amortize that up and say, okay, well, if we get 30,000, 30,000, um, viewers on that, then they've all paid that, then, then the, uh, the, the, the virtual box office would be, you know, $30,000. Uh, but what we're saying is that then at that point, then 10% of that will come down as a, to the creative team. So $3,000 would come down to the creative team. 
and then that's shared amongst the team. Now, at this stage, we're looking for those new models of how we get around the not fit for purpose legislation that exists already on how IP and distribution and rights are covered. So it's up to us as artists and in part of the creative sector to be creative around how we might envisage those things, those solutions to be made. And it's a little bit like the Lawrence Lessig, the Larry Lessig um, Creative Commons. A lot of the stuff that we do, all the stuff we do, is Creative Commons share and share alike. Sharing with attribution. The Creative Commons license is incredibly useful for us as organisations that are publicly funded. Lest we forget, the public money has made our work. Therefore, who does it belong to? Therefore, at what point does IP kick in? This is a really grey and interesting area, but allowing people to use, utilise, share and attribute your work actually has a real positive benefit and comes back into the, um, the, the not the fiscal capital, but the, not the physical capital, but the, uh, as I turned it, the social capital earlier on in the talk. So I'm almost finished now, but just a couple, just a couple of um, last minute sort of things. I'll start to give you my five, my five P worth. And everyone's familiar with the marketing mix and the five P's that were drilled into us in early days. I used to fill in business plans and, um, you know, of product, price, place, uh, promotion, and people. But as we all know now, this new digital world has got now to do with just marketing. And those who think it is, they can leave now. Because, in fact, we know that this is about being, being creative with this stuff. So I'm going to give you my new five pennyworth, my new five pworth. And the new five Ps I want to share with you are, the first one is giving yourself permission. Because if you don't give yourself permission, who else are you going to ask? No, who else is going to give it to you? Give yourself permission. Find your purpose and your passion. What is it you're going to do? What is it you want to reach? What is it you want to say? Who is it you want to address? Then your platforms. Choose your platforms carefully. Really choose the right platforms that are right for that project. The next one is have more pirates, piracy conversations. Preferably have a couple of pirates on your board. Preferably have some people who are going to be prepared to disrupt and rock the boat. And I particularly draw your attention to the, to the whole story, which is the, which is the pirate radio story, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, is the pirate radio stations were driven by a need for young people to hear more music, so therefore they had to move outside the broadcast laws, and therefore it drove a, a, a sea change, literally, in terms of, of commercial broadcast license. And the final P is play. Because if we're not playful with this stuff, and if we're not pushing and we're not really trying to extend and be creative with it, then we really ought to go and do something else. So in terms of that, that's my 5P worth. The, the permission, the purpose, the platforms, work with some pirates and please play. And um, I'd like to leave you with a, with a quote, which is from uh, Frank Rose, who wrote The Art of Immersion. The Art of Immersion. It says, uh, digital is rewriting all the rules. The rules for marketing and the rules for how we live. When something that fundamental is happening, the worst thing you can do is cling on to what worked in the past. Let's put it this way. Silicon Valley thrives on risk, and Hollywood is fueled by fear. Your guess as to who will win. Thank you.